Hello, welcome back to the Holy Toledo podcast. This is your host, Eric Lowe. And this episode, we're going to be talking about the film Baraka. Baraka is, a, of course, a documentary directed by Ron Frick, released in September of 1992. Um, although its budget was $2 million, its box office was unfortunately $1.3 million, but it was a, the first film ever to be restored and scanned in the 8K resolution, considered a cult classic. So the film also has a sister film, named Samsara, which explores an arguably darker, updated version of the theme shown in Baraka. So, Baraka as a film does not use any words, any, you know, dialogue, although it does have sounds, a lot of white noise, it's, you know, it's more of a film that uses visual images to display its message. And the message in Baraka is mostly focused on the world we live in, like Earth. Um, Ron Frick shows a lot of nature shots, as well as, you know, human, different types of humans, I would say. There are indigenous tribes. And then in another scene, he shows the working people of Japan. And I like the compare and contrasting that he does um, in the film. And he also shows, you know, the mountains of the Himalayans. But he also shows the trees that are getting cut down in the Amazon. So many of the cameras show there's an emphasis not on the where, but what is there. There are many volcanoes, water, you know, there's Hindu men that perform kikak. There's a monkey chant, and there's body paint, there's village dancing, there's, you know, ceremonies. And it's overall just a beautiful movie um there's many you know signs of war conflict in the history they explore Auschwitz you know they talk about you know meant like signs of logging blasting strip mining there's poverty you know rapid urban life factories that give way to war mass graves ancient ruins come into view such as like the ones in Rome and then there's the sacred river where, you know, pilgrims bathe and funerals, you know, burn. And at the end of the movie, there's a monk. And he rings a huge bell. And that marks the end of the movie where the stars wheel across the sky. So to the viewers at home who may be wondering, what can I learn from Barack? Or what, you know, what will I get out of the movie? Well... Here at Holy Toledo Podcasts, we make it our priority to give you our seven lessons from Baraka. So the first lesson would be the art of life, is to live in the present moment. So Ron Frick in the movie recurrently shows an eclipse taking place. This constant shot placement in the film shows that all of the scenes and locations are taking place at the same time, on the same planet, and under the same solar eclipse. Number two, count your blessings. When people pity themselves for having an older model of the iPhone, say, they need to be aware that there are kids who bathe in sewer water daily and don't receive proper nourishment, such as the one in, you know, in, in, in India. Frick shows these intense scenes of poverty, and they have the indigenous people And he also shows joy and happiness in these people. 
you know, these little kids with paint on their face smiling. But this is because they're thankful for what they have, such as, you know, shelter and a loving family with culture. Number three. At the end of the day, we are all humans. What Frick does to not include any words may seem different and, you know, like a, a shock to the people who work at National Geographic. But the wordless film displays a much deeper, more interpretive message. Such as a piece of artwork, the strong visuals and powerful ambient sounds that linger in the background immerses the viewer into Frick's world. The movie is less of a story and more of its own world. Number five. In every seed of good, there is always a piece of bad. Frick constantly puppets the audience emotions in this film. The blissful aesthetic landscape shots may transition into a more darker setting, such as, you know, the concentration camps or, you know, the illegal munitions that he shows from, you know, war crimes. And Frick made sure that the movie wasn't just a positive tribute to Mother Nature, but he also includes signs of, you know, signs of vice, famine, signs of war, poverty. Number six, power doesn't last forever. At the end of Baraka, Frick takes the audience into communist China. Many of the shots that he uses are low angle shots in these. Um, for the statues, the, si the skyscrapers, and he actually does a, you know, a regular, you know, face to face angle shot with the guards. This is to make the interaction much more personal, much more intimidating. And impactful for the viewers and the viewers may seem you know they seem they may seem fearful of you know this giant communist China empire that they have going on with you know giant statues giant skyscrapers but shortly after he shows this Frick shows the audience these Roman ruins back from, you know, the Roman Empire of, you know, what, what could have been. It showed these giant palaces in, you know, in ruins with graffiti, you know, with a statue that has cracked down the middle of it. These abandoned sites of once powerful empires, they fill up the screen. And I think Frick wanted to show that the empires such as, you know, the Communist Party of China come and go. Number seven. People feel comfort when they have a leader to guide them. In the beginning of Baraka, Frick chooses to film a group of Southeast Asian religious, like a, a ceremony going on. A couple hundred men of all ages gather in a semicircle and this, I think, was a monkey chant. Uh, they prey upon the marble statue of Buddha. It seems like this ceremony is very popular among a small town that Frick filmed in. Nearly every religion has some sort of father figure that helps them guide the followers in life. Religion gives people hope and purpose in life. Some would even say that it's a way to cope with, say, loneliness. A lot of these seven lessons can relate to a number of people. These lessons are more or less realistic for people to follow, um, such as, you know, count your blessings. Um, I certainly, you know, over the summer, uh, I went to Nicaragua to build houses with my mom's high school teacher. And I expected it to be somewhat of a wake-up call, but I was just shocked. As soon as I got there, I was shocked on how people lived in in Chakra Seca. And I certainly did count my blessings. I, I, you know, I got home. When I got home and I took a hot shower, 
I was just torn. I was just incredibly guilty of, you know, the privilege that I have in, you know, in New York. And at the end of the day, we're all humans. Lesson number three, I think, should be applied not only to me, but as towards the community as a whole. Such as, you know, in history, you'd hear things about how, you know, how in history, Andrew Jackson, he scared away. He didn't scare away. He drove away the Native Americans who were in the United States first. I think everyone can agree that that was one. It was not not cool of him to do that, obviously. And two, it was very selfish. And he was not that different from them. Although maybe he might have thought differently. He was also human. And that wasn't really the best way to deal with it. And another one that's probably the most um, significant in this current day and age but power doesn't last forever I mean take North Korea for example Kim Jong-un you know he has this say you know new order whatever he may call it where he's you know has all this power all these missiles but I'm sure in like what 50 years I mean he's already showing signs of you know struggle and the people are basically living in this prison. You know, they're starving. They have, they're living in slums. That's most of the people are living in slums in that um, country. So I think, at least for that nation, power does not last forever. So I would say watching this film definitely opened my eyes to how, how many people live in this world and how small I am compared to the 8 billion people that live in this planet. And compared to the other documentaries I know people are doing, such as, you know, OJ or, you know, a 60 Minutes film, I think this movie is, I would say, more my taste because focuses less on this one subject and more on, you know, something that I can sort of relate to more because you know, obviously I'm not a cold-blooded killer like OJ. But it just makes me feel like I'm definitely a part of this movie and I have a huge, not a huge role, I have a role in the earth and it makes me personally relate this to this movie more overall i think this movie is just a world beyond words you don't need leonardo dicaprio to be narrating this it's just a very i would say woke film i mean i'm just looking at some of the photos that are from this movie and they're just powerful each shot has some sort of story behind it some culture there's a Japanese traditional dance where they make these emotional faces I don't know how to describe it there's a scene where they show the um, the branding of chicks like actual animals getting branded and treated like a product um, it shows them on a conveyor and then they do a parallel parallel action with the people in Japan they sh or in the city you know it they shows that although it seems like we're not that alike you know obviously humans and uh, chicks we're very much alike when it comes to 
you know, that were tightly packed. We kind of don't really want to be there, you know, and we're part of this. We're, we're all, you know, I guess branded to whichever corporation we're working for. You know, um, they show these Japanese people living in these, like, pods. You know, it shows loneliness. It shows many different things in this film that just show. This, it gives you this different outlook on life. Trees, trees getting chopped down. Beautiful, beautiful landscapes. And once again, I, I would like to say that this movie was reproduced in 8K. And they have the prayer going on, which I think was very interesting. This movie has just shots that have no words. They have this just this blissful music playing in the background. But you you, you feel a story. You feel a story behind it. And I think that's just what makes this documentary a must-watch. And it definitely opens your eyes. Not only to the seven lessons, but, you know... You just have a better outlook on the world itself. This has been Holy Toledo Podcasts. Catch you on the flip side.